I'm Julia, and you're watching Julia at Home. I homeschool my four-year-old daughter and my two-year-old son. I'm inspired by Montessori, Waldorf, Charlotte Mason, and other things that might catch my eye. And we are starting our new school year in a couple of days, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I want to share with you now what our plan is with my two-year-old for toddler school. So he's actually going to be two and a half in September, which when you're two, that half year makes a difference. Um, uh, the thing to know about him is he has a speech delay. Um, he has been getting weekly speech therapy. Uh, we are using the county services in our county and we have a wonderful therapist who comes to our house and it's a parent coaching model. So she's teaching me how to help him and he has made fantastic progress in the last six months. Um, going from barely any words at two to, to now he is um, saying a lot more words, um, probably more than a hundred, I lost count, and um, is stringing them together in you know two or three words together um, and is able to communicate better. So, um, but basically a lot of what I consider, you know, school with him for toddler school is um, things to help him with his speech and that's done throughout the day um, modeling for him um, naming things for him encouraging him to talk and make sounds uh, a lot of the time um, the way his personality is you know he has to have a reason for saying it so um, you know tell me you want milk with the word milk and I'll get you milk but you've got to say it first um, that, that kind of thing um, has been working really well with him. Um, but I also have set aside a couple, more than a couple, like about half an hour each day to focus on him and his needs. And so there are some speech things that are included in that. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to just show you visually, um, we're working on getting him to make the shape with his mouth. He doesn't need to do the eyes. Um, but to do that, uh, we're, we're blowing on things. So we've got pinwheels. Um, but this is this is one of the favorites. It's just a pom-pom and we can put it on our hand and blow it off um, And a tip I got was to try having him use a straw when he blows he does this um, And so we want him to be able to do the you know um, So we have the straw with a rubber band. Um, I have him I demonstrate and have him you know Oh wow, let's see if I can do uh, blow the pom-pom or something else. It might be across the table. I also have my kids blowing, you know, sitting on the floor and kind of leaning down and blowing it back and forth to each other on the floor, which is fun. Um, my daughter likes to get involved. So um, we do things like that. I also do a little face massage with him um, to just like stimulate the areas of his face to make sure he's feeling it. Those are the main exercises for speech. And as we are transitioning from focus on communication, we'll be transitioning into more of a focus on helping him articulate and make certain sounds. We'll probably have more exercises that the speech therapist gives us that we can do. So we would do those then as well. Um, another big thing we do in this time together is reading. And it's not him practicing his reading, it's me reading to him and talking through books. I pulled out a stack of books that I'm hoping to look at at some point this week. So, I mean, again, this, if we do this every day, um, you know, this first week of homeschool, we might get through one or two books and at a time, and that's perfectly fine. Um, so, where to start here? Um, I'm gonna start from back, actually. So, he loves baseball. So, it's always good to do books that your children are interested in. So, this is just one we got from the library. We've gotten several from the library. This one just to, happens to have particularly nice pictures. It's just, it's the, the words, the lyrics for the song, if you can get the ball game. But so, more so than even just reading this kind of book, if it's something like baseball, um, we're talking about what we see. Um, colors that we see, he loves blue. So, he might point to all the blue that back there in the crowd. He also loves the ump, and I know there's a great picture of an ump somewhere in here. But you can see there's so many opportunities. You could talk about instruments, like hats. There's so many opportunities for language in this book, so that's a great choice for him. Um, but again, if your child is interested in something else, go with what they're interested in. Um, I pulled this one out from the library because I just really... I, so Baby Bear Counts 1, I think is what the other one is called, that I love getting as well for numbers. Um, I just I really like these Baby Bear books by Ashley Wolf. so go you, Ashley Wolf. Um, they're really nice. And so just, you know, toddlers, 
colors are just a great thing. Colors, shapes, counting, great thing for toddlers. Um, and then this is one of his favorites, Mighty Mighty Construction Site. We also have Good Night, Good Night Construction Site and um, the train one by the same author and illustrator. And I'm trying to think some other favorites. Um, but yeah, he construction is another one of his interests. So again, we look through, he can name some of them. He's been trying to say like bulldozer and dump truck. Um, we've been trying to get him to call excavator digger because it's easier to say, and he can say dig dirt, but he's like, no, he wants it called an excavator, but excavator is really hard to say. Um, so, but again, we talk, we, I read it to him and it's bonding and we talk about what we see. Um, and it's a great op opportunity to get him talking. Um, yeah, another one, Biscuit the Farm is a good one for, you know, farm animals and there's apples and there's maybe, uh, no, there's not a tractor because the donkey pulls it, but, um, you know, there's a pail. We can also make animal sounds with this one too. Animal sounds are really fun. Um, yeah. So another one, he loves the Very Hungry Caterpillar. So you must know this one, right? Right? You know this one, uh, the Very Hungry Caterpillar. Awesome. And last one, I promise. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is a series. I have all four for the four seasons. And this is actually a wordless book. So it just has pictures. So this is another great opportunity. So we just talk about what we see. There's um, there's a lot of detail in these pictures, and so we might find new things each time. And the kids are always pointing out, and we've had this with both kids. They're always pointing out. It's getting stuck together for some reason. Um, they're always pointing out things that that I not noticed before. So um, yeah, this is the summer one, and we also have you know, small fall, spring, and winter. Um, so those are some books we might go through. Now, a couple of other things we'll do, and we won't do all of these in one sitting, but I'm going to pull out one other um, activity that's it's more Montessori-based. Uh, um, some of them are, are Montessori activities, like such as the sensorial activities. Um, he has done cylinder blocks before. Um, we have tried to do the pink tower before, but he was definitely not at the maturity level for it. So we'll try that again, maybe in a month or two. And then if he's still not there, we'll just put it away. It's really designed for kids three and up. So as he gets closer to three, we'll, we'll see where we are about the, you know, the pink tower and the brown stair, but, um, the cylinder blocks he's good at and other kind of sensorial materials we may try. And then there's practical life. And one of the, I didn't bring it up, but one of the, I think classic, um, uh, practical life activities is pouring and you start with pouring. So you'd have two little pitchers on a tray and you start with maybe, um, beans or something like that. And then you know, you're pouring back and forth and you can hear it and it's dry. So if it, it's messy, you just put it all back in. And then once they get good at that, you can use a little bit of water. Um, so that's one, the one I brought up is one that both my kids have really enjoyed. Just coins in a coin slot. And I think actually like my, one of my grandmother's mom, Meme, I think he was, to me at some point and it has been perfect for these dollars dollar tree um coins that they love to just stick in and then the the sorry ah, not enough hands the top easily comes off and they can get back in there so um practical life activities uses fine motor skills um we also do ones with um spooning and with tongs and there's things that are more um matching activities matching um could be sensorial could be language this one i set up for this start of the school year it's really hard to show you i don't want to tip them all out but here um there's color tablets in here that i made a while ago for my daughter you might be able to see they are well loved mm. um and there's objects in here from actually from our sign dollars box and then one having trouble finding something purple so this is the six bead bar. We're just gonna call it beads. Um, and then he'll just have to find which matches. So I have orange tablet and the pumpkin. And then you put them on top. And I will demonstrate for him. I will just sit and, and calmly and quietly, you know, do the activity and show him how to do it and then um, put it away and tell him it's his turn. Um, and he should do it. And he's, he's just, that's how we do our practical life things as well. So those are more Montessori based activities and the goal would be to present one of those things to him each day after we do our speech and a little bit of reading. 
Another component to our toddler school is actually circle time. Um, it's basically a time where we're going to sing and do poems and finger plays. Um, I, I think it's a really enjoyable part of our morning. Um, I'm adding in more of the finger plays and seasonal songs and nursery rhymes. We also do Italian during that and I don't require him to participate in Italian because he's still learning English. So that's something I really gear towards my daughter. But for him, we do things like um, the Itsy Bitsy Spider or Ba Ba Black Sheep for those, you know, classic nursery rhymes um, and songs for kids. And the finger plays I found um, from uh, mostly from Waldorf resources from some lovely mamas who shared their Waldorf circle times. So that was circle time or morning time. And uh, then we have what I'm calling extras. And I talk about them a little bit more in my preschool plan um, video, um, which hopefully I can figure out how to link and should appear on one of these sides. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> but extras. So um, my two year olds always included in what we were doing during the day, if, unless it's, you know, work specific to my daughter, in which case he should be playing or, you know, we're not gonna like kick him out of the room. Um, so, um, but extras, we do, uh, nature. So he's always with us on our nature walks and when we go on hikes and I actually got him his own journal this year. i he picked it out. I love these decomposition books. I think they're perfect for nature journal books. Um, but he doesn't, he's not going to, you know, write in this. He can't write yet, but he's not even really going to draw directly in this. What I do is I bring, um, two clipboards for my kids, um, with smaller paper and then I bring crayons and color pencils and then they can draw. And then later what I'll do is I will glue or tape it into the book. And um, uh, if they have like a description they want me to write, I can then write it down for them. So nature is a big extra for us, but there's also art, which includes painting. And I do have him painting with us. Um, we each actually have a set of watercolors. Um, mine are nicer and <laughs> they have, you know, like, he is toddler ones um but this year i did invest in a couple of the stockmar liquid watercolors just in the primary colors so that we can play with some wet on wet watercolor painting and color mixing and stuff and so he is of course invited to do all that with us um, he doesn't have to but he's invited uh, baking is another one of those things he's invited to do with us and he actually really enjoys helping make bread and mixing and um, he loves getting his hands in his dough in the dough and playing with flour and getting flour all over the kitchen um so that's fun it's it's a sensory experience for him and he's getting you know the feel of the dough and the feel of the flour and the smell of it and then we bake it we see that we made bread so it's just like he can't beat it really it's it's a very um it's a great experience so the other extra that i can think of that really involves my toddler is things around the house cleaning and gardening and he actually is with me more and helps me with those things more than my preschooler does he's just I don't know if it's the age or the personality but he just seems to be more interested in it um, he loves to help me sweep the deck or he'll sweep the house sometimes he's sweeping sometimes he's pretending he's mowing in the house which is adorable with his little broom um, he likes to actually vacuum like he will turn plug the vacuum in and turn it on which really freaked me out at first. I was like, I don't think I want him to be able to do this. Um, but it's actually been fun. Um, and he can, he just, he vacuums. Like he actually vacuums the floor. Now he's not gonna thoroughly vacuum. I still have to, to do it as well, but um, it's kind of exciting. So I think that's it for toddler school. As I've mentioned before, there's a lot of stuff that is um, lifestyle related and just what we do as a family that we consider school that other people might not. So I think of all that in the context of school. And so I'm sharing some of that here with you. And um, I hope it's helpful to someone out there. I am enjoying sharing. I know I enjoy watching um, your plans out there in uh, YouTube and blog, Homeschool Mom Land. Um, so thank you all for sharing. If you liked this video, give me thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Until next time.